Hi everyone, my name is Herjit. I'm a counsellor in Let's Get Talking Galway and in Turbanur. Um, it's an honour to talk to you all today in this Mental Health Week and we'll be talking about positive thinking. So, just to begin, we'll pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your Holy Spirit. I thank you for the Spirit of Truth, Father. And I pray for your Holy Spirit to speak to your children today. I pray the peace of Jesus Christ to be upon every household. Amen. Okay, so just to start off with, we have two scriptures. That's Romans 12, 2. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing and perfect will. And also 2 Corinthians 10, 5. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. Okay, so how do we apply these scriptures to everyday life? Okay, so bear with me. So psychology is the study of the mind and neuroscience is the study of the brain. Okay, so... Who better to teach us about the brain than God himself and his word? There's a part of the brain called the amygdala. Now the amygdala controls our emotions like anxiety and sadness. Whatever worries and troubles us usually ends up controlling us. Okay, So the amygdala has two neuropathways coming from it. Okay, It's like a fork at the end of the road. So you have a positive neuropathway and you have a negative neuropathway. So every time you have positive thoughts, the positive neuropathway strengthens and lightens up. And when we have a negative thought, the negative neuropathway strengthens and lightens up. Okay? So when we have negative thoughts, we need to start looking at, is this helping me or is it harming me okay and what we want to do is start strengthening our positive neuropathies okay six million dollar question well it can happen in time and if you're consistent okay so I'm going to tell you a little story so I had a gran on my mum's side okay she lived in India and when I was two years old my parents decided to emigrate back to India. So this gran, we lived in her house. She had no running water, no electricity, no toilet. And she was a very, you could say, consistent and positive person. She gave birth to 12 children. She had six girls and six boys. Five of her girls died five of her daughters and one of her sons died. So all I ever heard this woman talk about was how grateful she was for her six children. She never spoke about her children that died. I only learned from um, my mum this year that she had six siblings that passed away. So this woman had gratitude just written over her. That shone out of her. And now, I couldn't even imagine someone losing a child. But this woman went through life, lost her husband at a very young age, went through life just consistently thinking of the positive. Okay, so how can we put this into practice? Okay, so I have clients and what I get my clients to do is Every morning, they have to think about and write down three things that they are grateful for. Every single day, they have to do this. And what this does, it kickstarts your positive neural pathways in the morning. So we're actually exercising them every single day. Okay, so they write these down and then if they choose to, they can go further and write why they are gr uh, grateful 
for these things in their lives. So we are retraining our brain to think more positively. And I know these times are hard and we're not doing our normal things. We're not doing day-to-day -day life. And I know it gets a little bit groundhog day, okay? So what we're trying to do is make the best of what we have at this time. And I'm not saying it's easy, because it's not. I know it's not easy. Okay, so, but we're, what we're trying to do is retrain our brain into thinking more positively. So when you do come into situations that are negative, you're quicker in getting out of them, okay? So we're starting to control our own minds and not allowing the worries and troubles to control us because the brain invents the mind. Okay, so if we look after the brain and train the brain and rewire it in such a way that it makes us have healthier minds. Okay, so I'm going to read that scripture again, again from Romans. Okay, so do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing and perfect will. And if you're a bit stuck in thinking that you can't hear God, especially the turbulent life we have just now, I want you to sit in a room and I want you to ask God what is coming in between you and him. What are you magnifying other than him? And be ready for an answer and ask him to speak to you because hearing God's voice as a Christian is number one priority for us because it gives you direction, it gives you comfort, it gives you encouragement. And when we are walking side by side with the Holy Spirit, it changes our behavior. It makes us think more positively and we are able to deal with situations in the way Christ would deal with them. So I hope that's been helpful and I hope to see you all very soon and take care of yourselves and stay safe. Bye.